so Oh, you're listening to Sandlot Sports Talk. I'm here with Mike Janikos, Anthony Peranio, and me, Tom the Truth. I like marshmallows. How are you, Mike? <laughs> Great introduction. It's better than last week. Good job. <laughs> better than last week. So as Tom just said, you're tuning in to Sandlot Sports Talk. Sports Talk from the fan perspective. I am Mike G. Alongside me, as always, my wingman, Tom the Truth Harnish. Tom? You look very festive today. I know. Your daughter made me this lovely headdress. Yes, courtesy of my two-year-old, Kiana. The funny thing is, we had a poll on our page about what Tom should dress up as. And decisively, turkey won. But I had no clue how to make Tom into a turkey. Um, Mm. So so we went with the old Native American. Yeah, we we couldn't find any face paint. So I'm very Native. Sandlot Sports Talk. We don't listen to our fans at all. Nope. No. Nope. Right Whatever you want, we don't do. We do what we want. But we do have a picture of you as a turkey. That's just we better. We can pull that up. Pull that up. There we go. Boom. A turkey. You have, you have a <laughs> you knife. You ask and you will hand. receive. There's Tom as a turkey, but for the show, Tom. Don't they have be... a certain dinner called Tom Turkey? Remember that? On the they cruises? also have that yeah. float. They also have that float on the Macy's Parade that's been there since like 1940. He's a scary looking turkey with yeah, the flapping very, wings. Yeah, yeah. I freaked they out really by that. They really need thing. to uh, step their game up. Well, the parade's ridiculous. We're not even going to talk about it. Anyone that watches that parade should jump off a cliff. Right. If, if you, unless you're five. That's okay. Although you've got to turn around the last two minutes when Santa comes out. You know, you're, like, you're ready to watch football, you right? You just know that right. guy's just an alcoholic, though. <laughs> He's been out all night, yeah. You're sitting ready to watch football, and then there's some, some goober in the, in the house that's like, oh, did you put the parade on? Why? Always one. You know, yeah. Tom worked the parade. I worked the parade. You were in it, weren't I, you? I was in it. Yeah, Anthony picked me up from the train station because I got out of there. And then I got home. The parade would still be on for two hours. And I could never... I Tom, like, look, there's your group. <laughs> yeah, there I am. <laughs> I was like, isn't this live? So it's like a whole I sca- met Cool in the gang once. <laughs> <laughs> that was my highlight of the parade. And on that note, <laughs> we're also joined by the greatest sports mind in the world today, Anthony Perenio. Hey, what's up, Mike? Are we actually going to talk sports or are we going to talk the parade? No, nah, I think I we're like going to bash yeah. Thanksgiving. Yes. Best. No, I love don't Thanksgiving. Bash Thanksgiving. Don't, Come on. Don't. Football. It's actually a good it's game a little this like, week. It's a little like a uh, segue to something I may talk about later, bashing Thanksgiving. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. in your rant you're going to do? Maybe. All right. I can't wait for that. So we are going to talk about sports because it's a sports talk show. Um, we're going to do our lineup. So we do the hot stove every week. We're going to talk about relevant current event topics. Then we move on to the truth freestyle where tom is going to freestyle rap about a subject matter he knows nothing about and he's going to use a keyword i can't wait to give you a keyword today who thought of the keyword oh, yeah. was it you it's always me oh. or i ask around you know yeah i don't know it i go up to random people on the subway in the streets and i say hey i need a keyword for a freestyle rap then after they punch me in the face they'll say something nice i got a good keyword for you today we're also going to do the uh, Thanksgiving pigskin. So we usually do our lock of the week. Instead of that, we're going to pick our winners for the uh, Thanksgiving football extravaganza. That's a good idea since we've been so bad doing picks. Oh, we've been terrible. Oh, but horrible. We're getting on there. At least we're at 500. Someone in the room's 0-2. Uh, I've just, you know, I got you right where I want you. All right, buddy. We'll do our three and out where Anthony and Tom go head-to-head, yeah. and then we're going to finish off. Oh, we got the boggle my mind with Anthony. I'm sorry, your rant. Let me finish off with the buzzer beater. Without further ado, hot stove topic number one. Can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk about NASCAR. All right. Yes, finally. Before we even talk about NASCAR, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 will, I will admit that NASCAR is a sport. I've come to grips with that. To it terms is. With that. It is. What I don't get is why you actually go to watch NASCAR. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me finish. Let him finish. So, so yeah. Here. Now, I've never been there, so maybe I'll plead ignorance yeah. on this. But you go, right? Yes. You're surrounded by a bunch of rednecks. No offense. I mean, I'm not trying to offend anyone. It's great. You can bring but, your own beer in. Excuse 24 me. 24 per person. You can bring your own beer. Yeah. 24. And chicken Just wings. Talk. Well, I'm hearing a lot of good things now, but you literally. <laughs> you your mind already. Why I imagine that you literally are looking at a track, mm-hmm. and the cars go vroom by you, and then you wait. And then vroom, they go by you again. Yeah. And like, what are you watching? You're watching people it's drive. It's really loud, and the yeah. tire bits like stick to your arm. It's awesome. And that's why I should watch NASCAR because awesome. it's and, like, loud. And explosions the... right in front of you. You'll you'll get your chance. So I'm that. sorry, carnage and human sacrifice is what makes NASCAR watchable. Of course. But we'll wait for wait for the crashes. The element of danger. Nobody wants to see long green flag runs. No. I'm boring. still not convinced. I don't like the cautions when the hot dog wrappers on the tra- track, and they just feel like they have to throw one. But, yes. Thank you, Tom. Um, the season's over. Well, without further ado, here's NASCAR. <laughs> yes. Tony Stewart. To me, he's the subway guy. He does are, the subway are we talking commercial. about this tight end that used to be on the Bengals? 
No, the Tony Ron Stewart, NASCAR driver. <laughs> he wins the 2011 championship by winning the Sprint Cup Series Ford 400 at Homestead Miami Speedway on Sunday. After going winless for much of the regular season, Tony rips off five wins, capping it all off with a nice come-from-behind victory. Much of the credit should go to Tony's crew chief, Darian Grubb, who I know nothing about, but you guys do. Yes, we do. He held the team together, apparently, this whole time. So Tony Stewart wins again. Please, I know nothing about this, but you tell me why this is interesting. Um, actually, it is interesting because this was actually close, and the, the two guys that were close in points that they only had the chance to win were one and two the whole race, running back and forth. And Darian Grubb actually made a, a, a lousy call. He told him to stay out, and Tony Stewart actually ran out of gas. So it almost cost him, actually, you, you just saying how great he is. And, uh, I'm but, just uh, going off of what yeah, I read. Yeah, okay. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> it cost but it almost cost him the race. Tony Stewart was livid, but Tony Stewart raced back up after a couple uh, pit road like flop-ups where they like loose lug nuts, fell on the floor, and he, he beat Carl Edwards, and Carl Edwards finished second. And it was a very exciting race, and a lot of people that didn't watch NASCAR actually – we're watching this race, which was amazing because no one watches NASCAR really, especially during football season. Yeah, exactly. But you know, the Bengals had just lost, and there was a long rain delay because it was in Miami. So I got to watch the, so wait. Like, the last. Oh, so that's why you laps. watch? I thought you were saying people yeah. Watch usually, NASCAR. I don't watch it when football season starts. I watch it like February to you know whatever February, probably to like August. August, and yeah. then I stop. Well, when they just on, forget, then just when it goes on TNT, I cannot watch it anymore because it's just <laughs> terrible. Yeah. It's really hard to look at you with that on. Uh, <laughs> that, I'll take with that cap uh, Thank on. you, Kiana, for this. Lovely. No, you can't take it off. You have to keep it on for Kiana. I will. So, Anthony, your thoughts on this NASCAR and Tony Stewart. How about this? You tell me, because I don't know, you know, obviously I haven't watched races before, but this sounds like a, a pretty amazing story, this whole him running off five wins and coming back in the points when probably no one thought he could do it. How does, how does this kind of fit into the history of NASCAR? Where would this find its place, this event? I think, well... The chase only came into effect, it was about um, roughly eight, nine years ago. A playoff system was put into effect, kind of like we need in college football, but that's another topic. Um, it was put into effect, and to win five out of ten races um, during the chase, as they call it, um, it's really unprecedented. You can't. It's something that's really hard to compare because it's something new. Um, to win any sort of race in NASCAR is very difficult. You know, There's so much things that go into winning a race. A lot of it comes down to luck, but um, it just takes skill to win five out of ten races, and... With Carl Edwards coming in second, um, Tony Stewart's only chance to win the championship was to come in first and beat him, and he went out and did that. So um, I think all the credit has to go to Stewart. You know, like Tom Tom brought up, Darian Grubb almost cost him the race, um, but you know, Grubb had D Darian Grubb has had a good tra uh, track record B even before Tony Stewart. He subbed in for Jimmy Johnson, who was a five time uh, Sprint Cup champion, um, and won two races with him. And now he's gone on to be a winning crew, a championship winning crew chief for Tony Stewart. So he has to, he's doing something right. But uh, Tony Stewart, in my mind, when you put all of it together and take you know take the equi just the great equipment he's driving around in, I think he's one of the best drivers. You know, he was a great driver in Indy Car Series, and now he's come over to NASCAR and done the same exact thing. So I think all in all, he's he'll be remembered as one of the top drivers of all time in any series, not just NASCAR. Excellent point taken. I, and I even if I know who Tony Stewart is, he must be good. Right. I mean, and also, I find it funny, and this is, maybe you'll find this ironic too, Anthony, that Tom, who is such a NASCAR fan, I am scared to death to be in a car with him when he's driving. Because he drives like he's on the track. Yeah, he yeah. does the he does 10 and 2, number one, which... You gotta. That's how NASCAR... But like, I'm drive. scared by people who drive 10 and 2. And he sits like with the wheel like in his chest. Just like NASCAR. Just like NASCAR. And I, his knees are kind of like up here. Well, that's because the cars just don't fit me, my mold, you know. It's a scary sight to be in it a is. car with him. He almost killed us once. Yep. I, I, I avoided the accident. You avoided the accident. He swerved to avoid it. It almost caused a pileup. <laughs> but we weren't in the pileup. It's close. Touche. <laughs> Touche. Hot stove topic number two. Justin Verlander adds another award. He won the Cy Young. Now he wins MVP. 13 first place votes and 280 total points. Second was Jacoby Ellsbury with 242. Jose Batista followed with 231. Verlander, the first pitcher to take both awards in 25 years since Roger Clemens did it. Now, this is what I, this is something that really bothers me, right? And it, it actually pisses me off to no end. The MVP award, most valuable player, right? Right. Has always been preached to be an award that is for the player who is of most value to his team. It's not about who hits the most home runs. It's not about who has the most wins, the most strikeouts. It's about most value to the team, right? I hear you. We're on the same page with that? Yeah. Ever since A-Rod won it in Texas, I think that was the first real kind of crazy one because Texas was in last place. He hit 50 home runs that year. Yeah. What year was yeah. that, Anthony? That was uh, 
I'm going to say 2,000. All right, I'll go with that. Um, <laughs> he had his 50 home runs, wins the MVP award, right? I'll take it. Ever since then, why? how is that value to a team, right? So we look at this now, right? Justin Verlander wins it. Obviously very valuable to his yes, team. Yes, absolutely. But a close second is Jacoby Ellsbury on a team that collapsed and didn't even make the playoffs. Then you got Jose Batista, who bashes home runs and didn't play a meaningful game probably his whole career. Right. So value to a team, and these guys are finishing second and third. Where's the value to the team? I don't even know where value. I mean, Verlander, he pitches every fifth day, only like 35 games. I don't see why he's the MVP. They have the Cy Young Award. That's why he gets it. How is that value when you have guys like Curtis Grandison playing 160, 162 games, you know? Right. And the whole point is, if, if, you're, if you're value to the team, meaning that, right, yeah. so – why call it the MVP award? Exactly. If we're already changing how we judge things, why not call it the best player? Or Anthony had a good name for it, the MOP. What was it? The most outstanding player. Most outstanding player. And just give it to the player who does the best for the season. I, right. Because I'm thinking if you're the most valuable player, you take your team to the playoffs. Not only do you take your team to the playoffs, you take your team far into the playoffs and maybe win a World but Series. The, the, so but, maybe Lance Berkman or, you know, David Fries should be the MVP. Right, but playoff – but. Your playoff stats aren't included in the MVP voting. I if, I, if I'm yeah. if I'm not mistaken, it's actually voted on before the playoffs begin. It is okay. yes. So, so they should give it out at the end of the year. Then they shouldn't wait mm-hmm. till after the season. I agree. I agree. But uh, like my problem with the whole thing was, or it should you know, be the you know the regular season most valuable player. And then right. Well, you have you already have the postseason MVP. Yeah, I but, know. But then maybe that should just be one. I, I think you know it it should be changed to a most most outstanding player and. I, I don't have a problem with Verlander winning it because if he's not on Detroit, they don't, they don't go to the playoffs. My problem is, um, and Tim Kirkchen brought up a good point on ESPN yesterday, and said you know, the reason he voted for Ryan Braun over Matt Kemp in the National League, even though Kemp had a better year, was the fact that Kemp didn't play a meaningful game, the Brewers were in contention all year, and made the playoffs. My thing was, well, if you carry that over to the American League, Boston was in it the entire year, even into September, even with their claps, and nobody was more valuable to Boston than Jacoby Ellsbury. If you look at their record in April, April when they started two and nine, and I think what are they eleven and fifteen for the month? Ellsbury hit one seventy. Ellsbury after that hit around three fifty, three sixty for the rest of the season, and the team took off. So that was the evidence right there. He was the most valuable player on that team, and for a leadoff guy to drive in over a hundred, to score over a hundred, to steal thirty nine, and hit thirty two home runs, that's unbelievable. And to me, he should have been the MVP. There was a crazy stat about. Um their record when Ellsbury scores a run, and it was it was ridiculous. It was during it was something I think in between May and June they were like thirty six and three when Jacoby Ellsbury scored a run. Yeah, it I was, mean, and that that proves value, right? But right. my argument would be the outcome, right? The outcome of them collapsing, not making the playoffs. He's in the same boat as a Batista. He's in the same boat as anyone else on Pittsburgh. They didn't make the playoffs. The right. outcome wasn't there. They weren't successful. So the value, the differential in the value shouldn't, shouldn't change. The whole point is, I agree with you, Ellsbury should have gotten it. Kemp should have definitely gotten it. And it shouldn't be MVP. Or if you call it MVP, it shouldn't be the most valuable to the team. It should be the player who just had the best season. And yes. let's just call it what it is. Because honestly... You know, a guy like Batista is never going to win it then if you actually go by the rules. No. I actually don't know what these guys are doing. They, they, it's all these writers who sit in a room and they make their picks and they say, oh, Kemp didn't get it because he wasn't valuable to the team. The team wasn't successful. Yet he finished second. So he's pulling votes in somewhere. Right. There was some, right? the, the thing is, the, the, even the writers are divided. It's right down the middle. Some people think it's the guy with the best stats and other people believe that it's the guy who contributed most to his team. So until there's something, until there's an actual guideline put out by Major League Baseball, and you have the same problem with the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame voting. Some guys put guys in. Some guys hold them out for whatever reason, for whatever their own thing is. Some, I think there should be some sort of set criteria. You know, There should be an outline, most valuable player, and exactly what it is. A formula. A set a, formula. Right. I hate that award. I, I, you know, it's just ridiculous. Most valuable team. That's the award. You know what award that is? World Series, baby. You know what I hate? When the Yankees don't win the World Series, then I don't care anymore. I agree with you. It's depressing. We're going to slide on to even something more depressing. Poor Tim Tebow. We're going to talk about Tebow Nation. And I see we have a, a picture behind you, Anthony, right over here. Yes. And somebody thought it was Boys to Men. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Boys to Men. So we got. That'd be a great Boys to Men. Adrian Peterson, Darrell Rivas, Tim Tebow, and Larry Fitzgerald. Boys to Men, ABC, BBD. Motown Philly. <laughs> Go, Tom. We got Adrian Peterson, led the league in rushing. We got Darrell Rivas, the best cornerback in the game, correct? Yeah. Then we got Tim Tebow. And then we got Larry Fitzgerald, probably one of the, the best receivers 
will be one of the best receivers in the history of the game. How, how do they go together? How do they go together? And that's where this it's, whole it's thing like comes in. With one Tebow. of these things is not like the other. A little <laughs> food fire. <laughs> nice. So it's, he continues to defy critics, despite I've heard critics say this week that he has the worst throwing motion in the history of football. Yeah. You see him throw these slant passes behind receivers, over receiver's head. We're talking about a 10-yard slant that we throw and touch football in the park. He's like and, Uncle Rico. Oh, it's terrible. Vince Young is Uncle Rico. Yet, he's winning games, correct? That's all that matters. And that's yes. all that matters, right? So, when, <laughs> so, so really, now this whole th- storm uh, is, is, is uh, brewing around Denver because John Elway was asked, are you any closer to finding your quarterback? given what's happened a couple of weeks. Obviously, the question is, is Tebow your quarterback because he's been winning games for you? John Elway's response was no. And he said a whole bunch of other things that really are meaningless at that point. But he said no. So now Tebow not only is getting flack from the media, his own administration and his own organization doesn't believe in him, and the only ones on his side are their fans, right? right? So here we are talking about Tim Tebow. Do you believe Tom? In the middle of a text. <laughs> John Thornton actually wants to come on the show again. Oh, John was a, oh yeah. So we should we take some time now to thank John for last week. We had John Thornton on our show last week. He's a great guy, he former NFL player. Tonight. Tell him to Skype in. Yeah. We could Skype in. I say come on. Tell him to Skype in. He could actually talk to us about these Thanksgiving games. Yes. So we may have John Thornton. A little surprise for the five fans that are listening tonight. Yes. Anthony, why don't you talk? Because Tom was too busy texting. I'm sorry. Well, I'll, you know, Elway's he's in a real predicament right here. The, the team is winning. But if you look at the style of football they're playing, it's very unique. Um, it, it, to me, it's very hard to build your, your offense this way. And, you know, you've seen it with Mike Vick. You know, even though he's a smaller version of Tebow, you know, I don't want to compare the two. But they're, but they're scrambling quarterbacks. Right, right. And a scrambling quarterback, it's been well-precedented, has never won a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, they take so many hits. But one would argue, and one argument may be, Steve Young. Won but a he Super was a Bowl. pocket passer at He was a point. pocket passer, but he, was a, he ran a lot. He did run. Right. However, I... Th- I think if you put all your eggs in one basket and you're going to go in the Tebow basket, if he gets hurt, you've drafted and built your whole entire offense around this sort of spread option, fake handoff, quarterback sneak. If he gets hurt, you're done. Good point. And I don't think it's worth doing that. It's just, yeah, it kind of works, but the beating that he takes week in and week out. Now, keep in mind, he's only been starting five weeks now. If this was week 12 and he has been starting 12 games, I don't think he's playing 12 games, taking the hits that he takes. Right. He, he doesn't know how to shield his body from hits. I mean, he takes takes guys on head on, and these guys are out there to hit him. And it's it's not, you know, he doesn't have that quickness like a Vic has to make a guy miss. He looks to run people over. So I don't think – I think Elway knows this. And um, I, I think before the end of the year, you're going to see Brady Quinn in there just to see what he can do. Because it's really a shame because you look at – they do have some decent weapons out there on the outside – who are being so underutilized. Oh, yeah. You know, you, if you're going to run this sort of offense, you need to have three tight ends and one receiver. Right. And to me, you have Demarius Thomas, you have Eddie Royal, you have Eric Decker. You have, you have Fells. Fells, four guys who can catch the ball, and to me, they're being wasted in this offense. Oh, yeah. And you also need a running back who can receive out of the backfield. Like, like you right. said, that's the whole purpose of it. They want, they want. I think you want Brady Quinn and all along, but he yes. couldn't put him in because of Orton. Now you release him. That's his guy. Right. He wants to see. He's a free agent at the end of the year. He wants to see him play. So. Right. And they said Brady Quinn was the best quarterback oh, yeah. in that camp this year. There were teams actually trying to trade for Brady Quinn before the season because he had a really, really good camp. Mm-hmm. And this is a you know under the tutelage of Elway. Maybe who knows? I mean, there was Quinn could have been the top pick in the draft the year he came out. Right. So who knows? Maybe it took him a few years to you know just mature a little bit, and he's ready to play. But you, you know, I think once Denver falls out, you will see Brady Quinn in there for a couple of games. Let me ask you this question. Um, other quarterbacks in the league who, who don't have good throwing motions, right? Um, other quarterbacks in the league who don't win games and also are not successful on the field. We can name a whole bunch of them through the history of football, mm-hmm. right? There are guys in the league right now, right? Anyone see Jake Skelton throw a pass? Oh, my God. Skelton? Yeah. yeah. He's got a rocket for an How's arm. Skelton in the league? He's got a good arm, but he can't. Because he, he went he to can't, Fordham. He Fordham. can't hit a barn. Fordham's own. So is the hate really centralized around that, A, this is a, a good-looking guy who gets a lot of press, B, he has probably more endorsements than, than quarterbacks in the league who are successful. And C, his whole, you know, spiritual, all about God, good old boy attitude. Well, yeah. I, th- I think it's been the fans have wanted to see him. The fans love him. But if you see during the course of the game, the fans are booing when they're three and out for 10 straight possessions. So they're winning right now, winning ugly. So that's kind of taking a little bit of the booing away. But once this team goes on a couple of game losing streak and they have 10 straight possessions of three and out and you're getting the ball at midfield and you can't move it 10 yards to get a field goal, 
The fans are going to turn. Right. The Tom, what do you think? Well, if you're a Denver fan, you should like tailgate in the parking lot till f- the fourth quarter and come in and be ready for the victory. Don't. That's yeah. Just don't. Just just don't come in. Just get ready for the win. <laughs> just get ready for that get, inevitable. Uh, be, getting, be like, getting, all right. Getting, it's oh, it's Tebow time. But, but, I gotta yeah. go. <laughs> Getting lost in this whole entire thing with Tebow is the fact that the defense has been playing right. great. Oh, Von, they're, they're Mil- the Von Miller should be defensive rookie of the year. They're the ones down. keeping it close. If these games aren't close, you can't run a spread up, spread option. He's right. gonna have to throw the ball. They're the ones keeping other teams under seventeen points. Right. That's what it is. So, I mean, they should be talking about Von Miller and what he brings to this team, not Tim Tebow. It's always Tim Tebow. I, I, I agree. And that's going to segue us into the truth freestyle. Oh, right. Are we right. ready for this? Are I'm we ready for this. Is John, is John going to Skype in? Can we get ready for that? Um, I don't know. But we'll see. I said right. surprise us. So if he we'll, does, he does. We'll get, we'll get your freestyle ready. Right. He'll come on at a different time because he loves the show. So your topic for your freestyle, you ready? Oh, it's a perfect it? segue. I hope it's so. all about Tim Tebow. Because isn't that what Thanksgiving should be about? Tim Tebow? Tim, Tim Tebow. Tebow. I know when I'm sitting at the table, I'm going to say I'm thankful for Tim Tebow. And what's my Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse magic word? Your magic word of the <laughs> week? <laughs> you should all scream when you say it. Do, 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 do. Is nymphomaniac. That's easy. He'll get that in the first, like, three words. Nympho- Tim Tebow and nymphomaniac. Wow, that's like oxy. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Do you have a word that rhymes with nymphomaniac? I will not accept nympho. It needs to be Afro- the full word. That doesn't rhyme. What kind of? Nymphomania. <laughs> Tom, you ready? Give me the beat. Oh. Yeah. Tebow. Nymphomaniac. There's a guy in Denver. His name is Tebow. He runs down the field. He puts on a show. Everywhere is an option, here or there. He's a nymphomaniac, so beware. I don't know if that's true, it's alleged, but it's cool because he's winning the games. So don't jump off the ledge if you're in Denver. You're ahead of the Jets in the standings. The Jets need to put on a show, but they just got T-Bowed. It was fun to watch all around, even though he threw for 60 yards. It's okay because they're winning games, and that's the name of the game. Woo! <laughs> Woo! With a little Ric Flair at the end. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Tom, I have to say, I'm going to clap for that. That was one of your better freestyles. Yeah. Tim and Tebow. A little bit shaky at the end. Got a little shaky yeah. at the, the end. First, the first, like, 30 seconds were great. Started off real strong. Yeah. Right? Some rhyming in there. It actually there, rhymed. Some time. words rhymed. The word alleged. Yeah. I had to say alleged because he's an alleged nymphomaniac. I don't want yeah, to accuse him. Alleged. That was I good. Don't want you, to sue. So many things going on in your mind. You were thinking alleged. Okay. Alleged. So many things going on in that head. Don't his. sue, Tim. Oh, man. So, you Tom. Get up on the show. Yeah. I mean, we could, could say we're a Christian show. You could talk about abstinence. Just tell him to come. Yeah. yeah. We could we could pull that Let's off. Let's find him on Facebook. Just we'll take the Christmas trees out and we'll put some crosses you think the, up. Tim some Tebow has, he might not yeah. like social media. Oh, yeah. He does have Twitter, I think. I think. I imagine him being like, I imagine I don't follow scene. like the religious guys like Kurt Warner because I can't deal with all that. Imagine the scene like you're at, you're, they're at the hotel, right? They're in a city. I heard like 16 year old girls like line up at the hotels. I imagine. And like you know, everyone's going out and there's Tebow. Like I picture him in footy pajamas <laughs> and, and he's just like, all right, it's like eight o'clock and he's like, all right, guys, he's got like a glass of milk and he's yeah. like, see you later. Do you think, <laughs> do you think that wears on the team though? The team's going out and qu- your quarterback just stays behind. Do you, do, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I would ima- I would imagine I would that there is my... some cr- camaraderie that happens you when, know, when you go you watch, out. When you watch movies like Unnecessary Roughness, like the quarter, you know, the quarterback is always out with the team. They're well, going, then again, you're going you're, to jail. Are you quoting Unnecessary together. Roughness like and comparing room, that to know, the NFL? Like, yeah, like, well, well, your quarterback is going to get the ball. First of all, Unnecessary Roughness. The guy, <laughs> the guy was the quarterback. What was his he name? Was Quantum uh, he was in Quantum Leap. He was in Quantum Leap, and he would travel to different bodies and 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 correct the wrongs of people's lives. But that was great. While we're on that, I mean, you can go to Cool Runnings. You know, everybody went out, and Darius was back in the oh, room. Oh, man. Feel the rhythm. Waxing turns you know. in the bathtub. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Remember, cool Darius stayed behind. Runnings. Yeah, Darius did. Yeah. Because he, he had to study the turns. The turns. Yeah, but they didn't remember? like him. They got into a fight with him. And they... well, he, I don't crashed, know. he crashed what, anyway. One what day I'll get my about? palace. Uh, we have to move on. This is getting out of, out of cool control. Runnings. It's always on HBO. It's John Candy should have won an Oscar. John Candy. Rest in peace. John Candy was great. Uncle Buck was his best movie. <laughs> All right. We're it's moving nice. on to Thanksgiving <laughs> pigskin. We should have another show. But just We're just talking about John movies. Candy movies. <laughs> Why can't we do it on this show? Like anyone uh, cares. <laughs> All right. We're moving on to the uh, Thanksgiving pigskin. So 
Right now, currently in the standings, we have Anthony and I tied for the lead, one and one. Yeah. Tom is 0-2, quote, unquote, he has us where he wants us, Anthony. Yes. yes. I've heard Tom say that a couple of times. Right, well, yeah. We and it's never a, a good Usually never when, the, when the Bengals are losing by like 14, I say we got them right where we want them. Yeah, then it's... Then they come back. Then yeah. they come back. So it's... Right. Okay. Here we go. We're going to start off... I'll start off and we'll go in a circle, okay? Okay, yeah. We got Green Bay at Detroit. And here, here's the other thing. I'm happy. This is the first Thanksgiving I can remember that they're actually good games because you always had Detroit play, and they were always terrible. And they yeah, always played just, Green Bay or, or the Patriots. Right. You always had the Miami over by halftime. They're terrible. And, and it's great if you have the other team in fantasy. And we have three solid games. Exactly. I think so. I mean, the, the Dallas, Miami. Eh. All right. But. So we got Green Bay going in the fourth field. Ready? Yep. Um, a couple of things to factor into your decision because we're going to talk about these games too. Number one, can Detroit hand the Pack their first loss? So this is that is a big thing, right? It's a mental thing. Detroit knows that the Pack are coming in and they're undefeated, right? Yep. And also, is it going to be a shootout? And I want to know the over under. So my thing is shootout. Yes, I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Obviously, Green Bay can put up the points, and we saw last week last week that Detroit can put up the points. I am going to go with Green Bay in this one for two reasons. One, I think Stafford still buckles under pressure. Yep. And obviously, Aaron Rodgers does not. And two, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to struggle a little bit with that front, that front seven. Detroit has a pretty solid front seven, I think so. So I think Aaron Rodgers is going to get, to get he's, he's going to he's going to struggle a little bit, but ultimately it's going to come down to fourth quarter and in a shootout, who do you go with? Uh, I'm Aaron Rodgers. You're going yeah. next, or I'll go. Next. No, Anthony goes. Tom, well, Tom, <laughs> Tom wants to oh, pick I'm, Detroit. I'm he wants to pick Detroit uh, so bad. <laughs> I. Normally, I might give Detroit a little bit of a chance, but I look at a team that last week gave up almost 40 points to the Panthers, and um, Green Bay's offense is Damn. a lot more explosive than Carolina's is. Um, and then I look at, you said the front seven, Detroit could slow down Rodgers, and I think they can slow him down a little bit, especially if James Starks doesn't play, because you can screen the Correct. Detroit Lions to death. You can screen them and gash them with the running game. If Starks doesn't play, Grant's not as good of a receiver nor as explosive as Starks. Mm-hmm. But I still think that they're not going to be the, the the back four will not be able to contain the Packer receivers. I just I say over under probably close to about sixty, but I think the Packers drop forty two on them, forty two twenty eight. But they still lose. I go Green Bay. Anthony goes Green Bay, and here's Tom. He's jumping out of his seat to pick the Detroit. last time the Packers were undefeated this late yeah, in the I season know. was nineteen sixty two. The Mets one came into existence that year. The Detroit Lions, they came into Detroit. Detroit Lions, led by Webster's dad, Alex Callis. Remember that show, <laughs> <Yes>. Webster? <laughs> they sacked Bart Starr eight times, and they beat them. And this is a 1962 all over again. Detroit Lions, boom, upset special, <laughs> going to win at home. And it's going to be happy Detroit. I love that you just uh, brought up Webster. Yes, I was Alex say Callis Webster, was amazing. Webster taught Patrick Ewing how to shoot free throws. He did. Yeah. And did it, didn't everyone want a clock that they can go into and end up in like a secret room? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Webster was great. And he, yeah, he like slid down that slide. Emmanuel Lewis. Yes. Didn't he always call his we, mom ma'am? We, we should have him Skype He never called the mom. Is still alive, that guy? I don't, I don't think don't he is. No, isn't Gary Coleman the one that's dead? The other guy yeah, is alive? Gary Col- yeah, Webster's alive. Wow. Way wow. to run this conversation at the ground. All right, I'm the depressed. Next game. All right, next game. Miami at Dallas. Oh, the good old boys in Dallas. They're at the Cowboy Stadium. Dallas has carried the choke label for some time. Would you be shocked if they dropped this game? And also, can Dallas take the division, thinking about big picture? I'm obviously going to go Dallas. Um, Tony Romo looks good. Yes, he does. And if you, you know, I think it's, he, he's, he's been having such a great season and, and kind of under the radar. No one's talking about him. But he's really been putting together a solid season. Um, also, I don't like Miami's secondary. And no. I think they have right been playing now, better. they've been playing better, but overall, I don't think they'll be able to contain Witten over the middle. Nope. And they also have a nice deep threat now, Lawrence Robinson, who I really like. So I'm going to go with Dallas in this one, and I do think that Dallas will take it. The- yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to go Dallas too. Uh, I don't see them losing this game. I don't see Miami after kind of emotional win. Over- Hold on, we got. I'm sorry, we got John skyping in. Right? Oh. Is that right? What's up, fellas? There he is. Hey, John, there's a the guy. John, what's how going you doing? On? Welcome to Sailor Sports Talk again. You just want to be on the show every week for an hour, John? I'm 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 gonna be on the show, and I I won't charge. I'm not one of these guys that charge you guys. I'm <laughs> on for free. I'm on for free. 
John, can can we're going to jump back a little bit because we've been talking about a couple of things, all football related. I want to okay. get uh, right now. We're breaking down the Thanksgiving games, but I really want to get your opinion on Tim Tebow. We had the Tim Tebow conversation. Do you have any feelings about Tim Tebow, uh, and especially what John Elway said this week about uh, not finding his, not quite any closer to finding his future quarterback, um, and just obviously Tim Tebow's winning games, and he has quite an unorthodox style. Uh, what do you think as far as Tim Tebow's place in this league? Um, I mean, I, I think it's a good story. Um, can you do it long term? I don't. I mean, I don't think so. I, I just think that he's. Uh, you would have to change a lot of things on your team. You saw that they got rid of uh, Brandon Lloyd. Um, you know, they got rid of one of their best receivers. Uh, they just got rid of Kyle Orton. So you almost have to transform your team to go with a guy like Tebow uh, because of his style. He's not really a passer. He's a runner. Uh, you don't know if wide receivers will want to play in that offense. And you almost go like to an old school Nebraska style of, of offense where you won't have any receivers even coming to your school. And now it's like in the NFL, you won't have any receivers and stuff. So it just it's going to be difficult. I think he's winning now. I think it's a good story. It's good for him. But long term, I don't think John Elway, who is a passing quarterback, is going to want this for his franchise. Good points. Solid points. Um, we're, and if you, this is great because we're excited. This is John Thornton, former NFL player. Um, joining us again, we have uh, we're breaking down the Thanksgiving games, correct? Okay. So I, I'd love for you to be part of this circle right here because we're going pretty much we're going you know picking the teams. We're also talking about some of the uh, the side stories that are coming with it. Uh, we had gone through Green Bay and Detroit. So uh, real quick, do you have a, a, a winner? This is a great game. Green Bay undefeated. Detroit a huge week last week. Uh, looks like it's going to be a shootout. Do you have a favorite a favorite horse in this race? Uh, not not really. I, I I think Green Bay is the favorite. Now, Detroit can beat them because we've seen, like, you know, Detroit, when they got revved up for Monday night against the Bears, uh, they were outstanding. Uh, you know, their first five games, 5-0, five and oh, they sort of uh, sputter of late. But, uh, you know, Green Bay is clicking on offense. It's going to be a shootout because I think Detroit can score. Uh, you know, both teams have been up and down lately, but Green Bay is finding a way to win. But um, Detroit is the kind of team that can beat them because they have a pass rush. Uh, they don't have a good secondary, but uh, I, I would say Green Bay wins tomorrow. So you're gonna you're going with Green Bay? I'm sorry, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going Green Bay All tomorrow. Right. I'm gonna I'll add go you. I'm adding you to our list now because we we started this right. We're tallying our wins, uh, so we're gonna add you on to this because the winner at the end of the year has to buy the pancake breakfast. Okay. Nice. Okay, I'm down. <laughs> All right. The winner? Good. I'm not even near the lead. <laughs> just so you know, John, Tom went with Detroit because I, th- I think it's uh, Tom and his need to feel special. That's just my Well, opinion. I mean, that's not a bad pick. I mean, D- Detroit is a type of team that, that could beat them, but, um, you know, I mean, you know, they're home. The crowd's going to be crazy. Thanksgiving. Um, you know, but I just think Aaron Rodgers is in such a zone that uh, it's going to take a great, great – uh, performance to beat them. And D- Detroit turns the ball over a lot offensively. Matt Stafford, I'm not a huge fan of his. So uh, I'm going to go with Green Bay until somebody beats him. Excellent. All right. We're on Miami and Dallas. I went Dallas. Anthony, who are you going with? I'm going with Dallas. Can't see Miami pulling that off. You're going with Dallas on that one? All right, Tom, I'm what do you think? I'm going to take Dallas. I don't have any Webster references for this game. <laughs> All right, Johnny, who do you got Miami at Dallas? Um... I'm going to go with Dallas. I can't go. I mean, I, I, w- I was going to say Miami because there's zero pressure on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been playing well. I like what Reggie Bush is doing. Um, you know, the quarterback, Matt Moore, has been playing well. Um, the defense has been playing great. So, uh, you know, I'm going to go I'm gonna go Miami. I, I would talk myself into Miami. I'm, I'm going to take the Dolphins. On this I, I would have wow. took Miami if Leon yeah. Lett was playing. <laughs> yeah, Leon, like, there you go. There you go. Right, but so no, I mean, the, the Dolphins don't have anything to – they're just – it seems like they, they got their second win. Um, they've been playing close games all year, um, and, and now they're, they're finding a way to win. And, you know, Dallas is, Dallas is okay. I mean, they're, they're winning close games, and, you know, they, they, they beat the Redskins in overtime last week. Tony Romo, uh, he's doing better. They have a running game, but I just think – you know, just just talking myself into it. I I think Miami is coming into this game. They're playing with house money, and and when you play with house money and you got good players, you can win. So you know, with uh, Brandon Marshall, Reggie Bush, uh, Matt Moore playing well, they have a decent offensive line, not great, decent, and I think their defense can uh, play with the Dallas offense. Excellent. I like the pick. I like it. 
jumping on to our night game, which I don't get to watch, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> you, you guys, you guys have this? Yeah, I don't have some direct TV. Man, I feel hosed on this one. I'm coming to your house. You have it? We can watch it here. We can go to John's house. You come to my house, man. I got All it. Right. Uh, All I, right. I got it up, man. I got it in my bar and I got it in my, you know, I got it in my lower level so we can have a good time. Can you get book as a flight, Tom? I'll have my wife make a pound cake, John. She makes a mean pound cake. <laughs> there you go. All right. We're so we got start driving now. <laughs> San Francisco, Baltimore. I love this game. I really want to watch it. Um, the two questions uh, to go along with our picks. Uh, there are two teams. That, they're pretty much mirror images of one another when you when you look at their uh, offense and defense. Uh, but which team is ready for glory this year? That's the question. Uh, and who's your favorite Harbaugh? Right. That's the two questions we're going to answer. I'm going to go with. I'm going with San Francisco on this one. Uh, only because I think um, with Baltimore and and Flacco, I'm not convinced. I love San Francisco's defense. I Me think too. they're they're gritty and they're aggressive. And I think I've seen Flacco uh, play really well against uh, poorer teams. Uh, but when he is struggling versus a good defense, it's a lost offense. So I'm going to go with San Francisco. I think the defense is going to hold it down. Um, I think San Francisco is also a team that's ready for glory. And my favorite, Harbaugh, you got to go with Jim, right? It's got to be The him. former player, yeah. comeback kid. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going with. Anthony, what do you got? Uh, if it was a full week, I'd be with you. But the short week, um, I have to go with the team that could pass the ball a little better. And I'm going to have to go with Baltimore on this, only because Gore is not 100%. I don't like running backs on the short week. He had 24 carries, which I was surprised about with the hurt knee. Mm -hmm. 24 carries on Sunday. I think he only had about 70 yards. Um, It's a short week versus a tough defense, tough place to play. Um, I don't want to say blowout, but I I think this game is going to be a bigger margin of victory for Baltimore than most people are expecting. And what do you think about your favorite hardball, buddy? Oh, it's Jim. I love the way he hopped across the <laughs> field with shorts. That was fantastic. Tom, what do you got? Uh, I got the San Francisco 49ers because I've been saying all year that the Baltimore Ravens are frauds. And I learned frauds. that last week that they are frauds and they should have lost. How'd you learn that last week? Oh, we got screwed. Oh. Jermaine Gresham. So it's, pers- it's personal with you, right? Oh, plus I went to the 49ers game and it was the worst game I've ever went to in my life because it was like 11 to 8 or something, the final score. Yeah, 12 to 8, yeah. some weird wow. score. So. They oh, have that's good right. defense. You were at that game. Yes. Cincinnati, right? Yes. Oh, man. You're taking this real I'm personal. I'm taking the 49ers. John, who do you got? San Francisco, Baltimore. I don't I don't like either team. I'm not really <laughs> – I'm, I'm not a fan of – you know, when the 49ers were here, I was at that game, too, in Cincinnati. Um, they looked horrible. Their offense was so bad. Uh, I'm, I can't believe the Bengals let them beat them, but um, – <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go with Baltimore at home. Uh, they, they have a good record. You know, Flacco – uh, he wins most of his home games. Um, you know, I just don't I don't know if the 49ers will be able to score enough in Baltimore with that crowd, which is one of my top three stadiums in the league as far as crowd noise. Oh, yeah. um, I'm just not a believer in Alex Smith, so that's that's probably why I'm leaning. And I, and I don't like Flacco at all, So, but uh, I just don't think that Alex Smith is going to find the offense in, in that stadium. So I'm, I'm going to lean Baltimore in this one. All right, so we got Anthony and John going with Baltimore, and, I, and me and Tom. It's kind of weird. John, John's like me; he hates Flacco from that his first. Oh, game I can't when, stand Flacco <laughs> when he ran fifty yards down the yeah. sideline. Yeah, the slowest run in the yeah. history of football. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of weird because it's you and on that last game, Tom. It's like me and you, and it's kind of like uh, you know when when you when you're on a team and you kind of look to the guy next to you, and you're like, oh man, we're gonna lose. That's how I feel right now. Tom's <laughs> luck has been real bad. Well, John. We always say that in baseball. That's when we usually win. <laughs> So, so so this is it, Tom. You're 0 two. Anthony, you and I are one and one. John's coming in late, so he's uh, he's a clean 0 and 0. So anything could happen. We got three games on the schedule this week, and I'm looking forward to my pancakes. I'll tell you that. <laughs> we're gonna slide on. John, you're gonna hang with us. I actually, yeah, I'm, I'm hanging. I'm hanging. All right, with this is great. So we're gonna do our three and out, right? I'm gonna ask you to be the judge for this, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, so our three and out segment, right, is where Anthony and Tom go head to head. They get three questions, uh, and they they each have 20 seconds to answer. Um, obviously the person who scores two out of three and gets two wins out of three is the winner. Currently, Tom is 2-0. and oh. He's been very successful at this. Anthony, 0-2. Oh so you got the rules, John? You're following? Yep, following. Right, excellent. So, guys, John's the judge. All right. Right? I'm ready. I'm ready Okay, this. This here we go. Stuff. Three and out, two men enter, one man leaves. Question number one. Little baseball, the Texas Rangers signed closer Joe Nathan. So that means Mr... Feliz is going to be a starter. Tom, you're arguing that Feliz should not be a starter. Anthony, you're arguing that it's a good move. Nathan closing, Feliz starting. Tom, take it away. 
First of all, Feliz should not be a starter because he's like Marion Rivera being a starter. He has one pitch, a fastball. How's he going? You can't get anyone out in this league with one pitch. I'm sorry. Plus, they've they've went to the World Series two straight years with him the closer. Why change now? That's all I have to say. Right. Don't bro. Don't don't fix what's not broken. Exactly. Anthony, Feliz should be a starter, and Joe Nathan's going to be the closer. What are your thoughts? You're well, backing that up? Yep. Uh, Feliz, Feliz came up through the minors as a starter. That was what the original plan was for him. Um, he only went into the closer's role because C.J. Wilson uh, faltered. So they moved him into the closer's role. And I think after last year's World Series, the guy's confidence is shot. Um, you blow a World Series like that, it's going to be in your head when Texas gets back into the playoffs last year. If it happens, it's time to move him back into the rotation. All right, John, those are your arguments. Who are you going with? And don't uh, be biased. I know you're friends with our buddy Tom here. Yeah, I, I'm. 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 I'm gonna go against Tom on this one. Oh, I'm going go against Tom. Just, 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 just because we're buddies. So I, I, you know, the first one I gotta go against him. All right. First one I gotta go against. Him. Ooh, that hurts. Oh man, look at Tom. Don't be so upset. I always lose the first one. This isn't personal. It's John, okay, John's Tom. always gonna love yeah. you. I always win the last two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to the number number two. Uh, John, are you a uh, wrestling fan? A WWE wrestling fan at all? Uh. Not a huge one, but I, I kind of know what's going on. Uh, how about here. growing up? Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage? I, I kind of like the, the I'm, a, I'm in the rock era. I, I like that one. Oh, I didn't like it when go. I was younger. So There we go. So this is a wrestling question. So we just had our, our annual Survivor Series. Happens every Thanksgiving, right? Yep. One of the biggest stages for the WWE. Uh, so in honor of that, Tom and Anthony are going to give us their promos, right? So Tom, you're going to be a wrestler. Anthony, you're a wrestler. We want to see your promos that you would do before you go out for your match. You're about to face each other. And John's going to give the point to who has the best promo. This is where Tom's charisma is really going to come into yeah, play. Yeah, because I, I saw this and was like, we have to get this off because. <laughs> 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 All right. So we're going to let Anthony go first on this one. Anthony, oh, this, this your promo, if you may, start now. Tom, I've known you for 20 years, but we've got to put the friendship aside. It's over. I'm going to take your pencil-shaped body and snap it right across <laughs> my knee and pin you for the one, two, three. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> That was some passion in there. It was. I just thought of that right now. That, that was good. Tom, see, <laughs> on the opposite end, Tom's been prepping for this for about I've been, a week. I've been I doing this in my mirror at home. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to move over to Tom's promo. Tom, take it away. You stand there in your Philip Rivers powder blue jersey looking all pretty with your fitness muscles and think you could snap me? Well, that's not going to happen because I'm going to come in the ring and bang you and beat you to all hell. And if you don't like that, that's okay. Because I'm going to beat the crap out of you, and that's the truth. <laughs> See, I, I added that. See that? You can't, and you can't handle the truth. <laughs> you're wearing you a, and you're wearing a powder blue Philip Rivers jersey. And he's still going, everyone. <laughs> you can't count that. It was beyond the 20 seconds. Well, well so, John, that's kind of embarrassing you had to hear that. But um, do, do, you have a, do you have a winner for that one? Tom, he, he, <laughs> he threw his name in it. He threw the truth in, so you got to oh. get that. Oh, yeah, it is the truth. Get, he threw the truth in, so you got <laughs> to get it, Tom. All right, here we go. We're going to jump back to football, so this is a good one. This is it. So we're, we're, we're tied up at one, one apiece. Well, Anthony, yeah. you're looking for your first win. You ready? Yeah, um, the pressure's on here. Yeah. All right, Tom, you're undefeated. You're like Green Bay right now. Yeah. But All right. streak is coming to an end tomorrow. Oh. Mine, I hope my mine isn't. So question number three, ready? Yes. Cutler's having surgery. We all know he's out, right? Tom, you're arguing that the Bears are still going to make the playoffs? Of course. Anthony, you're arguing that it's over in Chi-Town. We're going to let Tom take this one. Caleb Henney is coming in. He almost took him to the Super Bowl last year. Almost. So now he's got a little, you know, practice under his belt. I think they, you know, they, they're already winning. They have the, you know, NFC is not that tough. I think they still make it as a sixth seed. I don't think it's really a drop off. You know, Jay Cutler likes to fake injuries and come out of games, and Caleb Henney, maybe he's a tough guy. I know they put in a claim for Kyle Orton. Maybe they don't believe in him, but I believe in him. Wow, shot at Cutler on that one. Well, I think, you know, you, you bring up that he did almost bring them to the Super Bowl last year, but that was versus a defense that was not prepared to play a guy who likes to scramble around and run. And that's the hardest quarterback to come in, you know, mid game to chase a guy around. I think. Teams are going to look at film on him. They're going to have time to prepare. And as much as I don't like Jay Cutler, he's actually played really well this year. He's cut down on the mistakes. He's made big throws when he's had to. Um, I think this team is headed downward. Boom. All right, there we go. All right, John, this is it. That was the last, that was the last argument, last debate. What do you got for us? Uh, you know, I, I think Cutler's injury is going to be huge, so I have to go against Tom. Oh. Uh, Thank you so much, John. I finally Tom. won one. 
Oh man, Caleb Henry, week. man, that's you got love <laughs> Caleb Henry. <Hanny. laughs> no, no, Jay Cutler, man. You watch, oh. you're watching Deion Sanders highlights. He's gonna be like know, Caleb know, Henry. <laughs> well, Anthony, you got your first victory. Right, I gotta send John a Christmas present now. There you <laughs> go. Man. Send him that powder blue Philip Rivers jersey. <laughs> and as always, you got your first victory, so you get your victory speech. What do you want to talk about? Oh, I didn't have a speech prepared. I thought you I was gonna lose. Thank John Thornton in the academy for your win. <laughs> I'm. Gonna, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to give a speech. I'm going to go right to my bog on my mind. All right, so I don't want to go back to back. All right. So before you do that, um, John, we're going to be wrapping up soon, but thanks again for coming in. Uh, you know, we really appreciate your support. You coming on the show. We love hearing no what problem, you have to bro. say. Anytime, man. Thanks, yeah, John. We'll thanks, have you John. on. We're going to make a habit of this, okay? Nice. Okay, man. I'm, I'm around, so just let me know. All right. All right, All right fellas. Sorry, Tom, man. We still buddies. Though. Yeah, we are. We are. I still love you. All, All right, right, bro. <laughs> that is the, the legend in our eyes, John Thornton, <laughs> former NFL great. Um, all right, so before we get into Boggles My Mind, I wanted to bring something up. Um, and this isn't a rant or anything. It's just a question. And I always forget to bring it up, but I want to bring it on, on the show. Um, Tom is the biggest Bengal fan I've ever met. He goes to Cincinnati by himself. Biggest fan think, of any team I've ever met. Right. I think it's really strange and kind of creepy. that yeah, he, he it's, it's borderline. He goes yeah. to Cincinnati by himself to go to Bengal games what by himself. What do you himself. do there? I hang out with John. <laughs> Apparently, he's got a cult following there in Cincinnati. I, I promised him I would eventually go with him one time just to see what the fuss is. Danny went. He loves it. But he's the biggest Bengal fan. Yeah. Any, biggest sport fan for any franchise I've ever met. Absolutely. It's like my mom compares me to Fever Pitch. She says, that's me. Hopefully, one day they'll I win. I did see Fever Pitch. Yes. I don't, I don't know how to respond. you start auctioning off season tickets? <laughs> yeah. I don't have season tickets. I wish. I'm trying to move there. I mean, me, and also. You, can, I, you could come over. We can say, oh, oh, I've what been are over. you going to do for Steelers tickets? All I know is I've been when I go to your, when I went to your house for the first time and saw your bedroom, I thought a ten year old lived there because it's all Bengal stuff and autographs and starting right. lineup figures and everything. So he is the biggest Bengal fan I know, right? Absolutely. Yet, and this is my my gripe, his email on AOL is Tiki Barber. Still, what is that? Why why is your email Tiki Barber? But. You're the biggest Bengal fan and ever. You've had, you've had that since like, like 13 years. Me and my dad had season takes for the Giants, and I was just a Tiki Barber fan. That's why I wear number 21. Now, if you're a true friend of Tom's if you can remember his email before Tiki Barber, which I can remember. Um, is it a, is it an athlete? Yes. And is, is it a Bengal? No. Oh, I, it I was a hockey player. A hockey player? Boom. I have no... Nedved Buka fan. Boom? Nedved. Oh, I thought you were going to go Nedved Buka Boom. Fan. He loved Peter Ned... Nedved. Peter Nedved. And I love the originality. <laughs> Nedved fan. Just I, try, like you. I tried Dilfer fan, but I had to go T <laughs> Dilfer fan, which I still have, but I've kind of regressed a little Tiki bit. Tiki Baba. It's like a Boston for Tiki Baba. Baba yeah. Number one, disturbing you both still use AOL for your email. I don't. And, I changed no, it. Did you get my new number, one? No, I didn't get your new one. Because I don't like to, you know, like AOL is so convenient. You just go on, you get your mail. This is like just. <laughs> <laughs> you well, it got to the point where you've got in, mail. You it gets, go it gets embarrassed, and you go to a place to have your email address. Yeah, yeah. T Dilfer. <laughs> no, so I changed it. So I've gone out to. Everyone's like, what's your email address? I'm like, T I K I B A H B. Because if I say it, they're like, what? Yes, yeah, so I just I've switched to a perennial at Yahoo now. Yeah, I should really do that. I should really should. grow up. All right, now let's get um, uh, we're running a little late. We're getting the boggles my mind. We'll do the buzzer beater and we'll be out of here. So, Anthony, this is your rant. What is boggling your mind today? What boggles my mind today is I heard it on the train. Some people complaining about Thanksgiving and they were men, which I, that boggles my mind. <laughs> you have a Thursday holiday where there's great food, three football games and a three day weekend to follow. It's not like a regular Sunday where you have football, usually a really good meal on Sunday night, then you have work the next day. You get football, food, and if most people are off for three days. How could you complain about something like that? You know, I mean, e listen, even, <laughs> even if you're around a table with some family members who you really don't like, you can always put in – they're leaving, and I don't have to get up tomorrow morning for work. Was there a complaint? Like, was there a specific complaint by these gentlemen on the subway? Uh, they were complaining about having to go somewhere else, Maybe you know, having to like, travel a little bit. But I'm like, yeah. my thing was like – and would you, would you rather be going to work? You know, if, if I, I have to go get an arugula pie and cook it for Bruce. <laughs> right. Was that the, was that the thing? Was that, I, was I that I, the complaint? Mm, I don't like pumpkin pie. All I heard was travel and it's a pain in the ass. And I was like, travel is a pain in the ass. If you this isn't, it's six o'clock and we're on the train together. This isn't a pain in the ass. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, if they were flying, were they flying? Because that's a pain. No, I think they were driving. Oh, where were they going? I don't know. You should, like you, I said, I'm, well, and that's Bob. Sure that's that Bob. How, how could you not like Thanksgiving? How Just, could you not like it? You got football, food, mom's turkey, 
and days. Are you off Friday? Cranberry Tom? sauce. I'm off on Friday, yeah. which I'm never off. Wow, see? I'm off. Wow, What's the truth's right? off on Friday. It's a good Friday. Yes. Well, we love Thanksgiving here, and we're looking forward Except to it. Except for the parade. It sucks. Except for the parade. Yeah, that parade's awful. Cool in the gang. They're probably being it. Remember the Bacon <laughs> Brothers were in it when we went that I one said, time? I said, I smelled bacon. There they came. The, the Bacon <laughs> Brothers. B.B. Mac was, was there. B.B. Mac. Remember B.B. Mac? No. Back in the Oh, feeling. of course. Yeah. Yeah. Remember those three little blonde guys from England? They were cool. Whatever happened to B.B. Mac? And five. Whatever happened to B2K? For a bunch of guys that hate the parade, you sure love talking about it. We, we used to go. We used to go, and, and his brother would wear shorts and eat king cones. And, and it was like and 20, 20 degrees. degrees. No and joke. It raining. Yeah. We used to get in the front. We'd be there early. All the people. We'd see two floats and be like, all right, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's get back on the train. <laughs> all right, we're going to wrap things up with a buzzer beater. And this is something that, that you know, I, I guess I'm pretty angry as well with you, Anthony, because this is something that really pissed me off. Yeah. So Eric Decker, right? I love Eric Decker. Eric Decker. Yeah, he, he's a pretty hot guy. I could say that. I'm comfortable with my country sexuality. Singer. He's a good-looking guy. What country singer? Uh, I forget her name. I, but it's... Because my brother was debating. I said, Eric, he's like, who's Decker? I was like, he's the white receiver on the Broncos. Because he he's not white. I'm like, yes, he is. That you is know? debate for many. It was. it was. I was like, what are you looking at? I was like, Eddie, what, what, are you, what channel are you watching? He's, well, he's watching the red zone in non-HD. He's having a pretty good year, Eric Decker. He is. I love him. So he scores a touchdown, and he decides to Tebow and also salute. So he was on one knee, and he saluted uh, to, the, um, to our, our, obviously, our men overseas, correct? Yes. Um, and he draws a penalty for that? And also a fine, right? Because the rule is you cannot drop to a knee at any point in your celebration. But that's not true because the guys pray after celebrations. No, nope, not allowed to do it on the field. So the deal is... He was right, in the end zone. He was in the end zone. It was right after the yeah. touchdown. So looking into this, there have been fines for Troy Palomalu. Do you guys remember this one? The cell phone. He, using a cell phone on the sideline because he got rocked on the field and he wanted to let his wife know he was okay. Yeah. These fines and these penalties are out of hand. The NFL uh, well, doesn't know what they're doing. Hold on. There's no formula for it. It's just totally arbitrary. It's, well, you can't do that. Troy Palomalu gets rocked. He wants to let his wife know he's okay. Let him use the freaking cell phone, okay? Yeah. You've got to make exceptions. And the NFL is ruling with an iron fist. My whole thing is stop ruining the game. Let these guys do what they need to do to ensure their safety. And if they want to salute people overseas, let them do it. I don't. I agree with that. But the cell phone, that could get out of hand. Guys could be calling people, like, you know, their well, friends. No, you you can't leave the house without your cell phone. You well, have it right in front of you right yeah. now. I think you know, we but, need to have a, pa- a panel in the NFL of ex-players, of five ex-players handing out the fines because they've played the game. Not five guys up in the NFL offices that just decide, yeah, you know, that's 75000 that's 40000 that's... Have people who played the game who know, well, that was a malicious hit. There was malicious intent. They'll be able to tell you by the guy where the guy hit him if there was intent or not. Just don't have Rodney Harrison doing it. Right, because that I guy agree. just looked the layout. I think everybody. that's a genius idea. That's it. Put a panel together. Put take Troy Aikman out of the booth, please, so he doesn't have to do another Cowboy game. Put him up in the NFL. <laughs> five other players. Yeah, why is Troy Aikman and Daryl Johnson always doing all the Cowboy games? And it's the most annoying. You thing. remember that Troy Aikman commercial where he gets tackled by the girl and he yes. goes to the huddle and he goes, same play. Yep, I do remember that. that My was... grandfather always told me that Troy Aikman didn't like women. He did in that commercial. Yep, I don't believe it. We all know about you, Troy. Come out of the closet. And that's it. That's the buzzer beater. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> Whoa, thanks, Tommy. Say Sandlot us. Sports Talk with um, Top Shelf Network. You can Twitter us at, at SL Sports Talk, at SL Sports Talk. We're also on Facebook. Thank so you. We'll try and do better next week. Thank Happy you, Tommy. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. There's that turkey again. Where is that turkey? It's here somewhere.